The first topic I'm going to be talking about in my assignment is area between two curves. Now when you have a normal shape like square or a triangle, you would use area equals base times height to find the square area or in the triangle's case if it's half the square you would just do one half base times height. But when you have a graph with two functions, you have to use an integral to find the area. So uh, if one of the functions was named f of x and the other one was named g of x, and they were both piecewise continuous functions on an interval from a to b, and f of x was greater than g of x on that inter interval, then the area between the curves would be the integral from a to b of f of x minus g of x. Remember, f of x is always greater than g of x. So that means if you're looking on a graph, f of x would be over g of x. So you could also say that the area between two curves equals the integral from a to b of the upper function minus the lower function dx. The example problem we're going to be looking at wants us to find the area of the regions enclosed by the graphs of y equals e to the x power to the second power minus 2 and y to y equals radical 4 minus x squared. When we graph these two, we see that our y equals radical 4 minus x squared, the blue graph, is the graph above the red graph, which is our y equals e to the x squared minus 2. We also see where these two graphs intersect, and those are going to be our limits of integration. We're going to take the x values of the coordinates. So we have the limits of integration, negative 1.137 and positive 1.137. If you wanted to, you could also find the limits of integration by setting these two functions equal to each other and solving for x. Now we have everything we need to solve. So when you plug it all in, you get the integral from negative 1.137 to positive 1.137 of the upper function, uh, radical 4 minus x squared minus the lower function, e to the x squared minus 2. When you plug this function into a graph, like in a graphing calculator like I've done here, and you push enter, you should get 5.0495 and all the other numbers, and that rounds up to 5.050 units squared. And we have these units squared right here because we solved for area. The next topic I'm going to be covering in this assignment is volume by revolutions, the disk method, and the washer method. The definition of volume is just the amount of space that an object occupies, and to solve for volume, you have to take the area times the width. And that's how this ties in with the previous concept, the area between two curves, because you wouldn't be able to solve the volume without being able to solve the area. You use the disk method when an object revolves around an axis with no space in between that object and the axis. You use the washer method when an object revolves around an axis with a space between that object and the axis of rotation. To solve for the disk method, you're going to use this formula, which is just a rendition of the um, circle area formula, the pi r squared. So the um, stuff in the brackets right here is just our radius. And then we have the pi on the outside and the radius squared. So we have um, volume equals pi times the integral of a to b of f of x minus l squared. f of x is going to be greater than L in this case, but if L happened to be above f of x, then we would say we would say L minus f of x squared. Because remember, we're still using the 
upper minus lower concept that we talked about in the area between curves. For the washer method, we're going to be using this formula, volume equals pi times the integral of a to b of f of x minus l squared minus g of x minus l squared. Also, l is just the line or the axis of rotation. It's what the function is rotating on. Um, with this formula, f of x is going to be the inner function or the function that's closest to the axis of rotation, and g of x is going to be the outer function. That's the function farthest from the axis of rotation. And it's the same thing with these that we did over here. If L was above the functions, then you would have L minus F of X squared. And same thing for G of X, it would be L minus G of X squared. And remember, F of X is greater than G of X. It's the inner function and G of X is the outer function. The example problem we're going to be looking at wants us to find the volume generated when the region bounded by the graphs of y equals radical x plus 2 and y equals e to the x is rotated around the axis of rotation x equals negative 3. x equals negative 3 is going to be our L. When we graph these, we see that x equals negative 3 is perpendicular to the x-axis, so we're going to have to switch everything around and look at all the y values. So the limits of integration are going to be this 0.138 because that's the y value and the 1.564 because that's the y value. Also, because there's this hole between the um, region that we're solving for and the axis of rotation, we're going to be using the washer method. Tilting the graph will give us a better view of which functions are above the other ones and which functions are inner or outer functions. So when we do that, we have to remember that we have to remember that this up and down axis, this is our x-axis, and this side-to-side -side axis is our y-axis. Um, also remember that the green line is our axis of rotation, the x equals negative 3. From this graph, we see that x equals negative 3 is the bottommost function. We also see that this blue graph, which is the blue graph is y equals radical 2 plus x, is the inner function, and the outer function is the red graph, which is y equals e to the x. Also, remember that we have the limits, 0 0.138, 1.564. Because the axis of rotation is perpendicular to the x-axis, we can't just use the functions as they were given. We have to find the um, x equals, we have to like put them into x equals. So our inner function was y equals radical x plus 2. So we have to solve for x. When we square both sides, we get y squared equals x plus 2. And then we, when we subtract 2, we get y squared minus 2 equals x. For the other function, our red graph, we had y equals e to the x. And when you do ln on both sides, you get ln y equals x. And these are what will be in our integrand. So just remember that the um, formula is pi times the integral from a to b of the inner function minus the axis of rotation squared minus the outer function minus the axis of rotation squared. So when we plug everything in, we get the um, pi times the integral from 0.138 to 1.564 of y squared minus 2 
uh, y squared minus 2 minus negative 3 squared minus ln y minus negative 3 squared. When we put this in the calculator, when we put this in the calculator, we get negative 4.94, and then we multiply by pi to get negative 15.539. Because we're finding the volume and volumes can't be negative, we just drop the negative sign and make it a positive. And remember that it's units cubed because we're finding the volume. And the next problem, it wants us to find the volume of the solid formed by revolving this function, f of x equals x plus 2 to the 1 half power about the x-axis on the interval from negative 1 to 1. So the x-axis is just x equals 0. So this is the graph of the function, function y equals x plus 2 to the 1 half. Because there's no hole between the function and x equals 0, we use the disk method. Um, remember the upper minus lower, so the f of x is above x equals 0, so we won't have to change the formula like it says right here. We know, we have all of our information, we know that the function is x plus 2 to the 1 half power, we know that x equals 0, we know that a equals negative 1 and b equals 1, so now we can plug it into the formula and solve. We have pi times the integral of negative 1 to 1 of the function minus 0 squared. When we plug this into the graphing calculator, when we press enter, we get 4. Now that's before we multiplied it by pi. So now we have to multiply it by pi, and we get 12, 12.566, or just 4 pi units cubed. Remember, units cubed because we are talking about volume. And that's it for this presentation.